Your liver is one of the most important organs you have. It regulates your metabolism, blood filtration, detoxification, digestion, and energy storage. Our livers are also very resilient. If you were to cut out 90% of your liver, the remaining 10% would be able to regenerate back to its normal size. But there's one thing your liver can't handle. It's excess fat. Because once your liver fat crosses a certain threshold, it starts to suffocate this vital organ. And that's when the damage begins. I'm talking about insulin resistance, diabetes, heart disease, and kidney problems. A healthy person will have some amount of liver fat, ranging from 1 to 5%. Over 5% of liver fat is categorized as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and the higher the liver fat percentage, the more dangerous it becomes, eventually leading to liver cirrhosis or severe liver scarring. About 2.5 to 13% of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease progresses to liver cancer, which can be fatal. Non-alcoholic fatty liver refers to the cause being not alcoholism. About 24% of people in the world have this condition and is most commonly caused by obesity, poor metabolic health, and bad diet. You don't even have to be severely obese to develop fatty liver. You can actually be with an otherwise normal body weight, but with a small pot belly, which is a common sign of visceral fat that's being stored around the liver. I've gotten my liver fat scanned by an MRI, which is the most accurate way to measure liver fat and my result was 1.5%, which is lower than average. It means my liver is in a very good condition and I have excellent metabolic health. In the rest of this video, I'm going to talk about what you need to do to prevent and reduce liver fat, because it's going to improve your overall metabolic health and risk of future diseases like heart disease. If you want a full masterclass on liver health and liver fat, then check out our school community, USPAN Society, where we have a liver health module with all the details, plus many other courses and masterclasses about longevity, fitness, skin, anti-aging, and much more. Link in the description. The first and most important thing for losing liver fat is to lose visceral fat in general, which refers to the fat around the organs and inside muscles. If you are overweight or obese, then just lose weight and you will see a decrease in visceral fat and liver fat. If you're over 15% body fat for men and over 30% body fat for women, you have more visceral fat than what's optimal. Get to below 15% and 30% body fat as a first priority. However, if you're already below 15% body fat with normal body weight, then you need to tinker with your diet and exercise to really get your liver fat down to 1-3%, to which is the optimal range. Let's start with diet and foods. Liver fat accumulates if your body is storing fat as visceral fat and that visceral fat gets stored around the liver. Visceral fat is both the driver and the cause of insulin resistance, as well as poor metabolic flexibility. In your blood work, you can see that with elevated fasting insulin, elevated blood sugar, elevated triglycerides, and low HDL cholesterol. That's the constellation of poor metabolic health and high visceral fat. The combination of these blood markers represents a scenario where your body is poor at burning fat for fuel and it can't switch between fat and glucose for fuel. So by improving your metabolic flexibility, you allow your body to burn the fat around its organs. And it starts by burning the fat in your bloodstream that would otherwise impair your insulin sensitivity and glucose tolerance. Dietary polyphenols target visceral fat and liver fat specifically. That's because polyphenols activate pathways related to fat metabolism, such as AMPK. This helps with visceral fat loss and burning lipids. Polyphenols also increase beneficial bacteria in the gut that regulate your metabolism and lower inflammation. The Mediterranean diet is generally high in polyphenols, but a diet that's with added extra polyphenols from green tea and a green shake was seen to result in greater visceral fat loss than a standard Mediterranean diet and a standard healthy diet. This means that a higher polyphenol intake results in greater visceral fat loss. High polyphenol extra virgin olive oil has also been seen to be more effective at losing liver fat, liver stiffness, and improve overall metabolic health, more so than regular olive oil. The reason for that is the higher polyphenol content that have beneficial metabolic effects on the body. A 2022 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials saw that supplementing with common polyphenols like curcumin, resveratrol, and silymarin lowered liver enzymes, triglycerides, body weight, and insulin resistance. This indicated beneficial effects on liver fatness and liver stiffness. So there's a lot of evidence from preclinical data, observational data, as well as randomized controlled trials, showing that polyphenols have beneficial effects on liver fat and visceral fat specifically. In fact, they're the best foods for lowering visceral fat. Of course, you would have to avoid added fats and added sugars in your diet, but the addition of extra polyphenols appears to result in greater loss of visceral fat than not having those polyphenols in your diet. So no matter what diet you follow, adding extra polyphenols will reduce your visceral fat. There's two studies that illustrate this effect quite perfectly. A 2012 randomized controlled trial saw that catechin-enriched green tea for 12 weeks resulted in greater visceral fat loss than in the placebo group. 
Another 2009 study found that green tea catechins enhanced the loss of abdominal fat from exercise. The green tea group lost more fat mass across the board compared to the control group. They also lost more visceral fat as well as more subcutaneous fat. So the total weight loss from green tea intake isn't big, but it appears to result in more visceral fat loss. However, you can only lose so much visceral fat and liver fat with diet alone. A 2023 meta-analysis of 40 randomized controlled trials found that losing visceral fat with more calorie restriction plateaued at around 4,000 to 5,000 weekly calorie deficit, which is around 470 to 710 calories per day. Being in a more severe calorie deficit didn't result in higher visceral fat loss. However, exercise had linear dose-dependent effect. The more exercise you did, the more visceral fat you lost, even by burning over 5,000 calories per week from exercise. So the fastest way to lose visceral fat is to do more exercise, combined with general weight loss, but the benefits of weight loss plateau at a certain point. Some exercises are more effective at losing visceral fat as shown by a 2024 meta-analysis of 84 randomized control trials. They found that high-intensity interval training and aerobic exercise were the most effective, with 30-35% to reduction in visceral fat. Aerobic exercise plus resistance training resulted in 28-32% to reduction. Resistance training alone at 25-30% to and minimal aerobic exercise, so just very easy jogging or hiking, at 22-27%. to So based on this massive amount of studies, high-intensity interval training and aerobic exercise are the most effective exercises for lowering visceral fat. They're better than resistance training, although resistance training will also result in loss of visceral fat. It's just not as much as high-intensity interval training or aerobic exercise. Alright, let me give you some key takeaway tips for improving your liver. Liver fat above 5% is a sign of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and if it keeps progressing, you'll eventually reach liver damage and potentially liver cancer or liver failure. An optimal amount of visceral fat is between 1-3%, to or more like 1.5-2%. to You can measure your liver fat with an MRI or a fibro scan. Another way to estimate liver fat is to measure your visceral fat. An optimal amount of visceral fat is around 50 to 250 grams, and less than 500 is still acceptable. You can measure your visceral fat with an MRI or a DEXA scan, although the MRI is a bit more accurate. If you don't have access to these scans, then you can assess your visceral fat by measuring your waist circumference. A waist circumference above 90 cm for men and 80 cm for women is a sign of excess visceral fat. Losing weight overall will make you lose visceral fat and liver fat, but the leaner you get, the more specific you need to become with your diet. A diet higher in plant polyphenols is the most effective for reducing visceral and liver fat. Green tea, olive oil, berries, vegetables, nuts are the highest in polyphenols. You do need to improve your metabolic health and insulin sensitivity to help to burn the fat in your blood and around the organs. But you don't need to reduce your carbohydrate intake for that. I eat 300 grams of carbs and my liver fat is 1.5% and my visceral fat is 54 grams. The reason for that is that I'm in very good metabolic health thanks to exercise and a diet high in polyphenols. Exercise helps with visceral fat loss in a linear fashion, but the most effective exercise for that is aerobic exercise and high-intensity interval training. You should still do resistance training to improve your insulin sensitivity and muscle mass. There are some specific things I did to reduce my visceral fat, going from 350 grams to 54 grams. Check out this video about all the tactics I did for this next.